So as we get into the Age of Apocalypse, what we do here is we start with an event called the Legion Quest. Now, while a lot of things happen in this mini-series, for the most part, the main focus of the story is Legion, the son of Charles Xavier, traveling into the past to kill Eric Lyncher. Now, the reason for this, as Legion explains, is due to the fact that if Eric Lyncher never became Magneto, then Xavier's dream of a peaceful coexistence between humans and mutants would most likely succeed. The reason being because, one, Magneto wouldn't have have instilled in humanity, I guess, the fear or the inherent fear of mutants. And two, Xavier wouldn't have to focus on dealing with Magneto and humans. Instead, he could just focus on dealing with humans. However, what we find is that when Legion jumps into the past, he's followed by the X-Men and Bishop who attempt to try to stop Legion from making changes to the timeline. But as we know, they're ultimately unsuccessful when Xavier jumps in the way of the killing blow to save Magneto, resulting in the death of Charles Xavier. Now, in addition to this, at the same time that all this is happening, Apocalypse is basically watching this event unfold. And so when Charles Xavier dies, he basically chooses this moment as the perfect opportunity to begin his conquest of North America and the world. Now from here, we jump to some unspecified time with Magneto having established the X-Men. Now, the reason why I say unspecified is that we don't have the exact date. And due to the death of Charles Xavier, we don't know if the X-Men are founded earlier or later than they were normally founded in the normal timeline, but the main purpose of this story is to really be more of a prelude to the Age of Apocalypse in the sense that it establishes not just Magneto as the founder and leader of the X-Men residing in Wondergore, but it also establishes who the members of the X-Men are. The current roster, as it's composed of the X-Men in this story, consists of Iceman Bobby Drake, Storm Scarlet Witch, Jean Grey, and Colossus alongside the newly recruited Wolverine, who's actually referred to as Weapon X in the Age of Apocalypse as well as Rogue. Now, Rogue's introduction to the X-Men actually comes in the sense that as far as we can tell, Rogue was brought before Magneto by Mystique at Magneto's request. Now, we don't know if Rogue had already been around Mystique or if Mystique basically had to look and find her and then bring her to Magneto. And in truth, it probably doesn't really matter that much here. What does matter is that Apocalypse has basically already started his conquest of the world by launching an attack against Cape Citadel, which houses multiple nuclear warheads. Now, where Apocalypse initially makes his appearance here in the assault against Cape Citadel, what we also find is that among his henchmen is Sabretooth. But due to the arrival of the X-Men and their victory, or I guess temporary victory over Apocalypse and their capture of Sabretooth, Apocalypse basically retreats and Sabretooth is left behind. Now, at this point, we pick up with X-Men Alpha. And what this does is it officially launches the Age of Apocalypse event in the sense that we basically jump forward in time to see that Apocalypse has already taken over North North America. In addition to this, we're met with the arrival of Bishop. But what we also get is this sort of tour of what the world looks like now that Apocalypse has effectively taken over North America. What we find here is that we pick up with Bishop as he's simply traveling through Seattle when he's basically set upon by some young girl. Now, what's revealed to us here is that this young girl is actually human and that she's being pursued by a group called the Infinites. Now, the Infinites are a group that are tasked by Apocalypse stationed in various cities around North America and they're a assigned to eliminate humans wherever they're found, as well as take mutants alive for examination and processing. The result is that when Bishop uses his powers to repel the infinites, he draws their attention to the fact that he's a mutant, but he also gains the attention of the X-Men who've actually just arrived. Now, by this time, the X-Men have actually bolstered their ranks with Nightcrawler, with Blink, who's a mutant that can create portals, as well as Sabretooth, who they've basically indoctrinated to their cause. And so after the infinites are defeated, Bishop immediately sets on Magneto due to the fact that as far as Bishop recalls before the timeline changed, Magneto made no effort to stop Legion when Legion killed Xavier. So the result is that Magneto basically uses his powers to slow the flow of blood to Bishop's brain and to knock him out so they can take Bishop back to their base for questioning. Now from here, we switch to Dark Beast and the pins. Now with the introduction of Dark Beast, we get this understanding of what all is taking place regarding how things work under Apocalypse. What we learn is that unlike the normal timeline line of Hank McCoy, this version of Beast is very, very dark, and he actually serves the purpose of genetically manipulating and experimenting on mutants for the purpose of boosting their powers or boosting the powers of weaker mutants, and that all mutants who are deemed too weak to basically hold their own or to be uh, to be held among the normal ranks of Apocalypse are held captive in a place called the Pens until their powers can be boosted. What we also learn is that the Pens themselves fall under the direct jurisdiction of Mr. Sinister, and that Havoc and 
Cyclops are actually kind of surrogate suns that rely, uh, reside directly under him. Now, the actions of Dark Beast in manipulating the genes of various mutants should have actually ended some time ago, since Apocalypse has basically struck a deal with the Human High Council, which is a council composed of what's left of humanity in the world, and that the as far as the agreement goes, as long as Apocalypse stops his, his experimentation on humans and mutants, that the Human High Council will basically stay hands-off from Apocalypse's regime. But it's actually revealed to us when Sinister meets with Apocalypse that Apocalypse's cooperation with the Human High Council is actually a ruse, and that what he intends to do is to basically take advantage of their willingness to cooperate in order to launch an attack against the world as a whole and take everything over. Now, at this point, we jump to a place called Heaven, which is actually kind of this neutral zone for humans and mutants, and it's actually ran by Warren Worthington, who in the Age of Apocalypse never became Archangel, and he never joined the X-Men. What we're also told is that in terms of Heaven at the moment, that Gambit actually arrives here. And the reason why Gambit arrives is because his intention is to reach out to Magneto by going through Angel. And the reason for this is because Angel, due to Heaven being a neutral zone, has dealings with Magneto, with the Human High Council, and with Apocalypse himself. Now, while Angel is actually a little reluctant to assist Gambit in helping him get to uh, Magneto in order for Heaven to basically maintain its neutrality, he ultimately chooses to help Gambit as long as Gambit agrees never to enter Heaven again. And so at this point, we basically switch back to the X-Men and we pick up with Magneto and Rogue. And this is actually really cool here. What we learn is that they've actually produced a child that they've named after Charles Xavier. And the reason they were able to do this is because Magneto was basically able to manipulate his power to allow him or allow Rogue to physically touch him without her actually harming him. Now, I would go as far as to say that he's basically shielded his entire body with some sort of electromagnetic uh, field of some kind, with the exception of the fact that when the two of them uh, actually had intercourse, that they were able to produce a child as a result of his actions. But again, what we find is that due to Apocalypse having had almost all the telepaths and almost all the time-traveling mutants killed off, the only way for Magneto to basically verify the claims of Bishop that this world is not the way it's supposed to be is to actually have Rogue touch Bishop. And so what happens is that when Rogue touches Bishop, there's this kind of psychic backlash in the sense that while Rogue gains Bishop's memories, so does everybody else. And so everybody sees the way the world is supposed to be. Not everyone in the sense of everybody in the world, but everybody in the immediate vicinity. So Magneto, Gambit, Rogue, and so on, they see how the world's actually supposed to be here. And so what happens is they realize that in the correct reality before the Age of Apocalypse took place, that Charles Xavier would go on to launch a campaign for a peaceful coexistence between humans and mutants. They find out that Magneto's actually supposed to be a villain, and so on and so forth. And so with Magneto basically learning how things are supposed to be, learning that this reality is not the way it's supposed to be, what he does is he enacts a plan. And so what we'll find out in the next video is what this plan is. We'll find that he actually brings together a multitude of mutants. He sends Generation X to Seattle to uh, to capture, I guess, to bring back some various mutants from the pens. We see that Gambit and his team will be sent into space. We find out all kinds of things are going to be going on and that all this is going to go towards the goal of defeating Apocalypse. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring this video to an end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.